there's a story that's not being told, the story of Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. The world has condemned it as the occupied West Bank. Could it be the biblical and historical heartland of Israel? Hear the miraculous stories of true pioneers who have dedicated their lives to the restoration of this land. Discover what's being hidden by mainstream news and media. Experience extraordinary places that few people even know exist. Join us for the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. Welcome back to the Joshua and Caleb Report. Once again, we are in Samaria, right here in the heartland of Israel. We're on our way to meet and to introduce you to Batyan Baruch. Batyan Baruch have a very uh, unique talent, but it goes back thousands of years. They make ceramics. Pretty awesome to think that they're reconnecting back to an ancient uh, custom and tradition uh, that, they, that, that was passed down from family to families during the biblical period of time. But uh, I think their passion for the land, their connection to the history, and their dream for the future is what inspires me the most. And so I'm ecstatic to connect you guys to that. All right, Bayan Baruch, it's so exciting to be here. In your, I mean, like right outside your house. And I mean, truly, if, if this place was in America, it would be probably one of the number one pieces of real estate in all of America. <laughs> Literally, to wake up and see this view every morning and to watch the sunrise. And I mean, there's got to be just a miracle of what God did to bring you guys here. And so in starting off the interview, obviously, you guys speak English much better than I know a lot of Israelis. So you obviously have spent some time in America. So let's try to start there and walk us through your journey as to what brought you to this point. Well, um, I kind of want, want to say that uh, you know our our story is, is, is very diverse. My background and, and my wife's, and it's very much um, very much the story of the of, of the Jewish nation. Mm -hmm. You know, coming from you know maybe the four corners of the of the earth, but we both of us in our own uh, unique ways uh, through traveling and, and study. I, I lived with Native Americans in Alaska, and uh, I lived in the Caribbean. I traveled through Europe, and a lot of my uh, my searching led me to my own Jewish roots, and uh, very, very much inspired by by the reality of the ingathering of the exiles mm. that, that we see this, we see in our generation. What year did you actually make Aliyah settle down in Israel? Well, I was traveling. I thought I was traveling around the world, uh -huh. and I uh, needed to check out what's going on here in Israel. And I'm still here, 20, <laughs> 20 something still years later. It out. Still Yo, checking it out. Still growing. Yet. Still traveling. I like to say that I, you know, I, I used to be a traveler, you know, traveling um, horizontally, but and now I've been in, been in Israel for over 20 years, and I'm still traveling. That's never, right. never stopped. That's right. I have a tendency to to look for for expanse, uh -huh. um, not only for myself but also for the right. world. Um, I like uh, I like taking a place that needs fixing and and bringing out the beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, and in our tradition, there's uh, maybe the most um, the most powerful way of bringing hastening the redemption is by planting fruit trees in the land of Israel. Uh, that's right. So, yeah, so have you always been religious? Always had a connection to the Bible? Always had like a dream of coming to the land of Israel? Or is that was no. it the furthest thing from your mind at one point in time no. in your life? No, my, well, my mother's Yemenite, and if you know anything about the Yemenites, they're very traditional. No matter where uh, you put them, right. they're always very like holy Jews. Okay. Um, but I was raised in a total secular background in San Diego, California. Played basketball, really swimming, did everything yeah, just a regular American would do. And then at around age 17, I started feeling something different. I started saying, oh, this, is, this can't be it, that I'm just going to live here and die here, and that's going to be it. Did you, you know you were Jewish? Like, I knew I was Jewish, and... Uh, and we didn't really have any, we didn't really keep so much tradition, but something inside of my soul, it was like an invitation, kind of, like, come and check it out. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to Israel for a year. When I was 17, I left America. My mom wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> and I just left, and uh, I spent a year in Israel, in uh, University of Bar-Ilan. And then from there, I just stayed I, and didn't go back. So basically, on a, on a personal level, you guys have to say, you know, there's there's something deep that connects you to this place. Like, I mean, it's like most mothers in the world today 
won't just naturally choose to move out to this place and to be like, oh yeah, we're gonna raise our family way out in the middle of nowhere, and they're you know they may you know they may not have any neighbors for a while, but eventually they'll come. It's not it's not all you know just beautiful and fun and sunshine all the time. There's gotta be times that you know things happen. So I mean I don't know what, what is your take on that? Well, every day when I wake up and I look at this view in the morning, which is unbelievable, right. it's totally you could just sit and watch. It's like a whole movie. It gives me inspiration all over again every single morning when I get up, when I can catch the sunrise. Um, and day to day, it's, I have to say, I feel really blessed. I don't feel the hardship so much. Like a lot of people who came and actually started <clears throat> maybe 20, 30 years ago. Um, I feel comfortable here and I feel good. Um, it is, it is pioneering. It's, sometimes it's lonely, it's very alone, you know finding community, getting people up here. Um, but the inspiration, the beauty of it, it makes up for everything. And I'm, I'm not so, you know, spoiled that I can go a few days with electricity, so it's not such a big deal, as long as the kiln is working. Right. <laughs> I think a lot of people are like, wow, how are you doing this? Aren't you afraid? You know? And I think I'm more afraid of not living my life the way it's supposed to be. Every morning, I just feel like, uh, wow, I really want to live my life. And if you don't really live your life the way you believe it, that's death, you know. So I'm not, you know, I feel safe here. And I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing here. And that gives me a good feeling. That makes me feel confident. So now that you're here, when did you move to uh, Itamar here? About three years almost now. Wow. And so you started the shop here with uh, ceramics and all that three years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. That's fantastic. So what I want to do now is take the guys in and show them exactly how that looks. We want to get you on the wheel, show us how you make. We want to go around and see some of the stuff you do and uh, really connect people because it's our heart to, to really get behind and support. Like a lot of people, the guys watching this, they're going, hey, we want to support this. These guys are amazing. Bakhti and Baruch living out on the hill out here, settling the land. There's thousands, thousands of people. You may not feel it right now. But there it. is thousands <laughs> of people that are saying, hey, go, more power to you. Okay. Is there a name for the business? Yeah, it's Mud on the Mountain. Mud on the Mountain, that's so great. Wow, my guys, I look at all your pieces here. This is like absolutely amazing because there's one thing where you see talent and that's like where you see someone's like, they've, they've worked really hard, they've created this talent and it's like, wow, you wanna give them that. But what I see in your pieces, I see your heart, I see your belief, I see your connection, I see just like this desire for you to take what you see here in the land of Israel and show it to the world. And it's really, it's kind of totally connects to the Joshua and Caleb kind of theme is that when they, they came back from the promised land, they said, guys, look, taste and see the land is good, right? And so in, and as you resurrect this ancient, you know, this ancient tradition back from the days and bringing it back to life again, to me, is I definitely see that, you know, God's gifted you in this to show that. So Josh and I are just going to be intrigued to hear your stories oh, as yeah. to how each piece came about and uh, connect the rest of the world to this. Yeah. And I know just thing. walking around here, I, I mean, even at your front door, I'm sure you walk around and you pick up ancient pieces of pottery everywhere here, right? Definitely. Like it's just everywhere. Definitely, right here. You actually have a piece here. I have that these is so pieces. Awesome. And this, that I just keep them on the shelf. fantastic piece of things you found here? Yeah, right here. That's so great. Um, you know, I don't know how old these are, who made them, but this reminds me that everything I make is gonna somehow last. That's amazing. Whether it gets thrown out or used <laughs> or broken, oh, it's wow. gonna last. Uh, hey! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What's this? That's so great. This our little boy. What's, what's his name? Elia Yosef. Elia Yosef. Give me a high five. Tell me good. Yeah, right here. You're going to be a part of the interview. Come on. <laughs> that's great. So just connecting to the land. That's so beautiful. What Caleb's saying about even bringing this goodness of the land to the nations and to the, even back into Israel is such a beautiful thing. It's such a Joshua and Caleb kind of a thing to do, to really bring it out. What, tell us about so the it's, piece. With it's the, really, really exciting because yeah. I don't consider myself an artist. Uh -huh. I consider myself a... Uh, craft, yeah, crafts. <laughs> A, wor a worker, kind yeah. of. And uh, I just look out my window and I see what's growing out there and I really get that inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I put them and implant them into the pieces. As an example, here's one piece. 
This is definitely something to make in the summer when everything's dry. Right. Um, and flowers, wild flowers that have been dri dried out throughout the whole summer are picked and pressed into the clay. And um, that's so gorgeous. Yeah, you can feel it. It's wow. alive. You see these wow. flowers. Yeah, totally. And this is just, just what grows here. This is just gr growing out here. I don't even know what it is. Wow. Um, you get the design on the bottom. And then I have some lace that I press into the clay and I cover it in, and it's glazed, high firing glazed, huh. at 1,200 Celsius. Wow. And, and uh, it's just when it comes out of the kiln, it's just like this is proof. You know, here we are, yeah. after two or three thousand years that we're back in the land. Wow. And it's, it's written here on the pieces. And um, here's also an example. This is a fig tree, oh, wow. fig leaf that we pick. Sometimes I say to my daughter, go quickly, go pick out the little small ones that are just coming out. Right. And they'll, she'll okay. bring me back wow. a whole bunch of beautiful little figs. And I will press it into the clay. And I put a little iron oxide wash on it and glaze it. And uh, that is amazing. So now, we'll, that's the biggest proof I've ever seen right there. Taking a fig leaf or, a, say, a vine or something like that and stamping it off. That's forever. Like, that's like proof to the world that this redemption is, is on its way, right? Most yeah. ceramics aren't seasonal, but these are seasonal. Exactly. <laughs> you can only right. make certain, certain lines at certain times of the year. Working with pottery is like one of the most physical things, and it can be not spiritual. It's so physical right. that you can get lost in it. Because the glazing, the shape, and the, you know, you gotta measure and you gotta weigh, and it has to be certain. Once you start making things like uh, in wholesale, you gotta kind of get it the right shape. And so you can really be all wrapped up in that physicality. And so I'm infusing spirituality into the clay all the time. Like before I sit, before I sit, I say in Hebrew, B'Shem Hashem Na'asevan Atzleach, in the name of God, let me do and let me succeed in this that I'm doing. You know, I want to do God's will. I'm not here just to sell pottery. I'm not here just to make money. I really want to do God's will and, you know, I'll do anything for it. And this is the, this is the path that God showed me to work with clay and um, I don't take it for granted. I feel like it's... Uh, my job in the world, besides raising a family which comes first, you know, as me and my personal um, extension of who I am, to take this clay, which is heavy and cold and dead, and to turn it and twist it and move it and fire it and glaze it and color it and put it on the shelves for people to come and take a piece and put it on their Shabbat table or to, you know, eat from it or serve a salad for their family or like Shabbos candles with it and to feel inspired that th this is, you know, this is a real thing. This is not, you know, just uh, marketing. This is like, like, I want to really live my life and I want to do it in the way God wants me to do it. So For all the guys who are going to watch this, it's going to be so encouraging to see, well, somebody's actually doing it. Somebody is doing what the prophets only dreamed about, you know, 3,500, you know, 2,500 years ago, all throughout the ages, there's been this thing sitting there and all of a sudden, Batya and Baruch took it on and said, this is us. Mm -hmm. And so I say to all of you guys, you guys have, have seen an amazing testimony of a, of a prophetic journey, really, as God has gathered the exiles from around the world and he's brought them back into an ancient homeland to rebuild it. And so sometimes we, you know, we're, Josh and I are obviously connected to the vineyards and to the life, but it says in the prophets, they're going to rebuild those ancient ruins again, right? And so part of rebuilding those ancient ruins is bringing back the pottery, bringing back those, those roots of their foundation. And, and what, what God has gifted by in is something I believe is, is an incredible part of this restoration, this Geulah. And so I strongly encourage all of you guys to consider checking out her products and buying these products so we can support these valiant pioneers on the front lines so that they can continue building, raising families, building homes, and resurrecting this ancient thing that's been forgotten for thousands of years. Yeah. So it's exciting to be with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing Thank you. Ple pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Hashem, Hashem, Masev and Atzliach. For the sake of God's name, we should do and be successful. There you go. Said Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.